Elon Musk announced over a year ago that he planned to convert Twitter into an everything app, like China's WeChat, an app to do everything, including online banking and finance. Last April, Musk announced that Twitter Incorporated has been renamed to X Corporation. He created a new artificial intelligence company known as X.AI, and he partnered with eToro for stock and crypto exchange. The media would have you believe that Elon Musk is an independent billionaire genius whose dream is to revolutionize banking. But this story is demonstrably false. The facts tell us that Elon Musk is a front man for the same old, same old. But because he says there are only two genders, he has gained the trust of a radicalized people in a time of war without ever having to explain his lies. Musk says he grew up poor but his family was rich with emeralds and had a history of abuse and witchcraft, telltale signs of multi-generational mind control. Musk received tens of thousands of dollars from his parents to launch his first business venture, a digital phone book known as Zip2. Outside coders were hired to write the entire thing because Elon couldn't code. Zip2 sold for millions and went nowhere, but Elon made $22 million and with the help of the mainstream media, launched his new persona as a quirky pop star genius. He then acquired X.com and announced he would create an online bank known as X. He partnered with banking experts who all left the company after accusing Elon of lying to the media about the product, which is all he did. Elon Musk is believed to have co-founded PayPal. This is false. In 2000, Musk sold his failing X.com business to Confinity, a company founded in 1998 by Peter Thiel and Max Levkin. All Musk reportedly did there was insist on changing the company's name to X. He was forced out, but somehow managed to get them to agree in writing to remove all references to founders from the company website. Musk made nearly 200 million off the sale of PayPal, a company that he contributed nothing to, and then used that money, along with the illusion of being a successful businessman co-founder, to buy his way into Tesla. Tesla Motors was founded in 2003 by Mark Tarpening and Martin Eberhard, who developed the Tesla Roadster. When Tesla accepted millions from Elon, it came with the condition that he be named chairman of the company. Even though he only contributed money, Musk was unable to hide his anger that the media wasn't giving him credit for Tesla Motors. And after forcing Eberhard out of the company, he rewrote their history to have himself listed as an original co-founder. The obvious fake persona of a billionaire quirky genius has worked so well that few even question SpaceX. The official story is that Elon, who has absolutely no experience with rocket science, came up with the idea for SpaceX while traveling to Russia with the CIA's Michael Griffin of InQtel. Shortly after this conversation, Griffin was made administrator of NASA, where he launched the COTS program that privatized NASA's rocket program and awarded $278 million to SpaceX, who had never made or flown any rockets. Musk then partnered with rocket engineer Tom Mueller who went on to produce rocket technology that has clearly been developed for years in the private sectors of the military industrial complex. Elon's companies have received billions in government subsidies over the last two decades, money that was later spent on the purchase of Twitter, where he immediately began the process of turning it into an everything app with its own banking system, or rather the ruling class cabal that pulls his strings is turning Twitter into an everything app with its own banking system. And that should be alarming. But he says there are only two genders and families are good and people love a hero. They don't need to chip you to control you. We already have iris scanners and palm scanners. A cashless society will do the job. And for many, Elon's X will be preferable to Amazon's palm scanners. The illusion of choice will make your financial enslavement less painful. Essentially, if, if, if done right, the X would be, would, would serve people's financial needs to such a degree that over time it would 
become, I don't know, maybe half of the global financial system. Wow. Or some big number. Okay. Um, I'm not sure what the number is, but pretty big. Um, so it, it would be by far the biggest sort of financial institution. It, but, but like I said, not, not, not really in the way that people are used to thinking about uh, banks. Mm -hmm. Just um, just the most efficient database for the thing that is money. Um, like I said, like least amount of fraud, uh, everything's real time. Um, and if it involves money in any way, it can be dealt with seamlessly on one, one lo location. What, what is it that um, inhibits human machine symbiosis? It's the data rate. When you communicate, especially with a phone, you're moving your thumbs right. very slowly. So you're like moving your two little meat sticks <laughs> right. at, at a rate that's maybe 10 bits per second, optimistically 100 bits per second. And computers are, are communicating at the gigabit uh, level. We're already um, a cyborg, if you think about it. The computers uh, are an extension of ourselves. Um, and when we die, there's like, we have like a digital ghost. You know, all of our text messages and social media. Could you imagine that one day we would be able to download our human brain capacity into a Optimus? Yes. I think that is, I'm not saying this is, I think, I think it is possible, I think, to do that. It is possible. Which would be a, a different way of eternal life because we would also download our personalities into a body. Yes, we could, we could download uh, the things that we believe make ourselves unique. Uh, we could effectively merge, merge with artificial intelligence by, uh, by, by improving the speed of interaction between um, our cortex and our tertiary layer. Musk expressed on Twitter last October that he would be using his purchase of Twitter as a, quote, accelerant to creating Everything X, the Everything app. Ideally, an app similar maybe, I guess, to China's WeChat, one where you can message social network, but also pay people stuff. The, the, the way to think of the uh, Neuralink device is kind of like a, a Fitbit or an Apple Watch. I and mean, that's what it, sort of the the idea behind Neuralink is to try to more tightly couple uh, collective human will to uh, the to, to digital uh, superintelligence. And with artificial intelligence, we are summoning the demon. You know, you know all those stories where there's the guy with the pentagram and the holy water, and he's like, "Yeah, you sure you can control the demon?" <laughs> Didn't work out.